Hi, thank you all for joining us. My name is Teresa Bates with Peaceful Passages, and this is my co-host, Sarah Onstad. And I wanted to explain a little bit of uh, who we are and what, what brought us to wanting to talk to congregations and communities about uh, end-of-life scenarios and challenges. So myself, a little bit of history is I've been a hospice caregiver for about 32 years. And there was one point in my life where I, I absolutely loved the hospice work and learned a lot. And I'll share some of my stories and things like that um, in this particular series. But there was a point where I was, talking to, I was talking to God and praying, what happens after somebody passes away? Mm -hmm. What happens in that time frame? And I, that began a journey for me to learn about um, after death care and the Jewish rituals. And I went to school uh, with the, at the Gamaliel Institute and that the father had opened up a door to learn so much information that um, I wanna be able to be a blessing and to teach communities on how to bring peace at the end of death, at the end of life um, for others. How about you? Um, well, my journey started back in 2017 when my mom's best friend passed away. And mm -hmm. so that triggered me to learn more and figure out like what is like all this about and what's the biblical perspective and like what about like how do you plan for this? What about my own mortality? And like, how does that like affect my life and everybody else? And so I've been self-educating since then. Mm -hmm. And I'm just extremely passionate about the subject, not only to help others, but for my own self-growth and that kind of thing. And so it's just been a very interesting journey. And I've been very blessed meeting yeah. Miss Theresa and she's been help guiding that journey. Yeah. Well, what, with, um, what, I've, what I've learned over the years is this is a topic that a lot of people have a really hard time talking about mm -hmm. is um, the topic of death, dying. It's and, scary. And it, it, it is. Mm -hmm. And our society is, is, in history, has really tried to avoid the topic. Mm -hmm. And usually is if you talk about death or you talk about end of life or you want to have a do your will or advance directive or anything like that, or talk to your children or your spouse about it. It feels very it. intimidating. It is very intimidating. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, what, what happens is like, oh my gosh, are you dying? Is there illness? Are you sick in some way that we don't know about? Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily, it's, it's where we've been. Mm -hmm. But what, what we want to do is open up the conversation and... Remove the, the taboo and make it less right. scary so it's an easy conversation to have. Right. So uh, when, when the Father put in my heart to start Peaceful Passages, um, it's, it's to help open up a conversation with, within either individuals, small groups, or communities mm -hmm. on how to have a safe place to talk about the topics of death, dying, and there, because there's so much there in so, that. So much. Um, but also when a death in your community does occur, on how to have protocols, how to have things in place, mm -hmm. so that way there's peace there instead of chaos. Exactly. Yeah. So um, we want to begin this, this particular session and talk about how our society actually looks at death and dying. Mm -hmm. So um, do you want to talk a little bit about, about how our society with movies and... It's a very negative perspective, unfortunately, and it's become taboo or scary, or you see even, even in the media, like whether it's the news and you see like, you know, shootings or crazy things that are happening in the world, or even just movies, you see like horror movies and that kind of thing. And there's no positive way of looking at it. And it's right. over, it's over negative I guess is the word. Right. I don't know. And so. Tra right. We're, we're, we're taught that mm -hmm. Um, with the movies, and I'm and I'm seeing the trend go from wholesome movies mm -hmm. to less wholesome and more negative, and <clears throat> we're we're now in a society that when it talk when we talk about death and dying in, in our movies, mm -hmm. it's something to be feared. It's something that's that's horrific, yeah. and you got and you got more murders and terrorism and mm -hmm. things like that, where it makes the topic of of death being very scary, something that we should be avoided, mm -hmm. 
and is very gruesome. Even some of the music that we're talking about now, um, it's it's fight or flight yeah. kind of kind of move, kind mm-hmm. of music. Yeah. And what happens is that is in in the airways, it teaches us, it's trying to push us to to an area where we fear it, mm-hmm. we try to avoid it, and um, and that's not a healthy place to be. No. Because in reality, death happens to everybody. Truth. You have, you have um, even sometimes in the womb with mm-hmm. miscarriages, but death has no age limit. Mm-mm. It has no gender, no nationality. And it's interesting. I was interviewing, when I was going to school, I interviewed a funeral director mm-hmm. uh, as part of my class uh, project. And she was saying over 75 to 80 percent of people that come into a funeral home don't have anything written out. Nope. There's no they're advanced... ill prepared, right? Because they don't want to recognize it. They if they think that they avoid it or don't think about it, oh, it's right. going to happen to me, right? Or or you know yeah. some you know having things written out. You know I'm too young for this to happen. And she was telling me it's up to between 75 and 80 percent of people that don't have anything written out. Mm -hmm. And what happens is when you don't have anything written out. It's extremely stressful for your loved ones. It is very stressful. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to add that to them in that time of grief already. Right. So um, we wanted to talk a little bit about um, having having things written out Mm -hmm. on the purpose for advanced directives and, and things like that. So um, do you want to hit more of the advanced directive? You want to talk a little bit about what an advanced directive is? And We can, yes. Um, there are different kinds of advanced directives. There are your financial ones, and then there's your medical ones. And so mm-hmm. um, with medical, you could have a person who, if in the event, say, you were unconscious or unable to make um, decisions for yourself, they would be there um, as your medical power of attorney to be mm-hmm. able to make those decisions for you mm-hmm. um, because you're unable to. And so whether that's pulling life support or whether or not you want to be resuscitated or the list goes on because there are so many different scenarios. It's better to have that medical power of attorney than perhaps maybe an advanced directive because you can't cover all the different scenarios. Yes, right. it's good to have that, but right. you know, infinite possibilities of what could happen. So it's better to have that person who knows you so well right. that they know like, yeah, she would not have wanted this or right. she would have wanted this. Right. And it's mm-hmm. in with the medical power of attorney, you want somebody that you know trusts you. And oh, yeah. they might not necessarily have the same um, wants and desires mm-hmm. medically, yeah. but will honor with what you want. Because we have no idea, you know, we, we live in a in an age where Anything to You know, we, we want to think we're going to live forever. But uh, a friend of mine had just recently um, walked through her father-in-law passing away. And then two months later, her husband got in a car accident. Mm-hmm. And not having anything written out, there's a whole lot of things afterwards that um, she's learning to walk through. It's a lot to navigate. It is. But knowing knowing her as well as I do, mm-hmm. she, you know, in in an event of a car accident, if somebody were to survive mm-hmm. and there's that block of time that, that your spouse or your friend couldn't make medical decisions, mm-hmm. then that that responsibility would fall upon you. True. Yes, what do they want? How do they want it? Do they want life support? Do they not want life support? If they want life support, how long is exactly. it going to be there for? So you want to pick somebody that knows you, knows what you want, and um, and is willing to to step in. And sometimes you have to, they have to have the strength and willingness to actually fight and do it. for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, because there's a lot of times where the medical staff is supportive, but then there's also times where they want to kind of skirt the mm-hmm. issue and 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 make other decisions that they're not quite ready you to know do, to yeah. make so um but that's you know we're thinking adult but then there's the children mm-hmm. as well there's a lot of dynamics so yeah there's like we were saying earlier there's no particular age limit mm-hmm. um the other thing is having the durable power of attorney and they're the ones that are in charge of your your money issues mm-hmm. and things like that <clears throat> generally 
um, we try to promote that it not be the same person. Yeah. It can be. It can be, but it can also be right. way too stressful. And also, you have right. different people in your lives who, it would be better if they took care of one thing and other people are better taking it other things. Right. So, yeah. Right. Because, um, you know, sometimes people are people. Mm -hmm. And there is just there's just a lot of chaos that can happen in that particular Very uh, in the, those particular events. Um, but with with age, I have a another friend of mine who has a a handicapped child, mm -hmm. and they have to put in place on what to do because they're my, my friend is a little older, and their child is still in their 30s. Yeah. Well, more than likely, the child is going to survive past, them, past yeah. them. And they need someone to right. care for them and help them. Right. Yeah. And it's where to put them. And, and even though they're physically healthy, mentally, they can't make those kind of decisions. Correct. So yeah. that's, they need you know, a again, it's mm -hmm. the, um, the medical, medical power of attorney, durable power of attorney. Mm -hmm. But also, if they were, uh, if the parents were to pass away, then you have the guardianship on who do, who do you trust to do that? Is there a family member that can do that? Is there, um, would they become a ward of the state where the state would come in to do that? There's positives about that. There's also a, a lot, lot of negatives, negatives yeah. about that as well. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> when you're choosing these kind of things, it's it's not a simple thing. No, you want to really think out through yeah. who's going to be your liaison yeah. for this. And, it, yeah. and if you're a parent having children, mm -hmm. Um, you know, which child do you want to done to have that, you know, and so not when cause fights or jealousy or yeah. a, a lot of discord. Do you have them yeah. there or you don't even have to choose a family member mm -hmm. Could be a to friend. do. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, what, it, one of the other things I wanted to talk a little bit about, <clears throat> and I changed my paper is to have, is like we were saying earlier is to have things in writing. Mm -hmm. And because when you if have it's not the, writing, it doesn't exist. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I was talking to my father, he says, well, everybody knows what I want. And I'm like, Dad, did you write it down? He says, everybody knows. It's that's like, not, Dad, that's not, that's you work. have to write it down. Because, God forbid, if you were to get in a car accident mm -hmm. and you don't have anything written down, who's in charge? Exactly. And then everybody's squabbling and trying to figure out right. there's all kinds of stress. Right. And, you know, and using my dad as an example, um, I'm the youngest of five siblings. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm the only one that lives in the territory where my dad is at. So yeah. all of that, technically, legal, not necessarily legally, but responsibility-wise, since I'm closest in, in location to my dad, it'll yeah. fall on me. <clears throat> and um, would I be the one making all those decisions? Or, you know, I'd have to consult my brothers and sisters mm -hmm. when things are written out. And that's what I explained to them is have it in writing. Have it Make writing. it clear because, yeah, right. you love so, your family. You want it to be as easy of a process as possible. You don't want to cause them undue stress right. and unnecessary problems. Right. Yeah. So um, some of the things to have written down is, you know, and it's, and it's hard and challenging, mm -hmm. but, you know, who is the doctor that you want? If yeah. you have a funeral home, if you already know the place where you want to be buried, mm -hmm. um, or if you want to be cremated, yeah, all the there's different, there's options, different, yeah. different interment options that mm -hmm. are out there. And we'll talk about that in further episodes. Mm -hmm. But um, having, again, having things in writing is just very important. Yes. Um, but one of, the, one of the pieces of paper that I learned um, to have in writing, and, and for me, this was, this was an aha moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't know that they had anything like this, was a, um, a, a time of death deed. Mm -hmm. And that means... Um, you have, you ha it has to be filled out while you have all of your mental capacity with you. But it's, you fill it out in the, the county where you live. And if, it's, if you want your home to go to a specific person, mm -hmm. then you list the name of the person, you list the deed, and that gets filed in the county where they're at. So upon the, the untimely or timely death of the person, mm -hmm then all that, all that person, say that if I passed away, and I, just as an example mm -hmm. for here, yeah. your, name was, your name was the person that my home was supposed to go to, on yeah. to. Mm -hmm. So um, at the event of death, having that paper filed ahead of time in the county, all that would be required at that particular point 
is you would go down, you would have, you'd have a co- your own copy, mm-hmm. but you would go down to that county and you would have your, your driver's license or an ID and say, this property is mine. And it would be signed over to you right then and there. It doesn't have to go through probate. Makes it so it much more efficient. It doesn't, A lot right. less money. Right. A lot easier process. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's one of the things that can be do, that you can do, um, but also have, have your your will mm-hmm. put out where do you want things to go and even if you don't have a lot of items it's still it's good. Yeah. it's it's still a really good thing to have mm-hmm. because um if you have specific jewelry where um i don't know if my children are watching this i hope they're watching this but one of the things that they're not aware that i'm doing is i'm buying nice necklaces and things and wearing them around my children Mm -hmm. or my grandchildren. I have a lot of grandchildren. And so they see, they see me wearing the necklaces and with one of my granddaughters, when they mention that, Mm -hmm. Oh, I like, that's a pretty necklace. I tuck that in the back and you know, Mm -hmm. I write that down. So upon my death, then that particular grandchild would, would get that necklace Mm -hmm. or we get that picture or things like that. Um, and it's and it's you know having those things so that way it stops the fighting exactly and you know mm-hmm. and it's and it's hard because when when things aren't written down on who gets what how things are done mm-hmm. it just it ends up causing it's terrible um, yeah, yeah it's it gets to be very challenging mm-hmm. um, but one of the other things that I want to talk about um, past advanced planning is um, or let me. Let me backtrack just a little bit. There's there's a lot of different resources for advanced planning. And it doesn't have to be super complicated or overwhelming. It can be a right. very simple, straightforward process. Right. And um, having having the things written out, mm-hmm. I know there's a lot of resources online um, for the city state that you live in. You can uh, if you're a, if you're comfortable searching the internet, there's times that I am, I'm not I am not tech savvy. But I've learned enough that you can go to your your state uh, website Mm -hmm. and they will have resources for wills, advanced planning, advanced directives, and things like that. So you can download basic copies there. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there's Aging with Dignity, the five wishes. Right. The Aging Mm -hmm. with Dignity. Now, that's one resource that I try to encourage a lot of people to to look into. Because the Aging with Dignity and the five wishes, you pay $5, you can either get... Um, the five, the five wishes put in. Um, you can have it sent to you digitally, mm-hmm. digitally, or a paper copy. Mm-hmm. But it it asks different kinds of questions about um, if you can't make decisions, who's going to help make those decisions? It helps it guide asks, you through it. Right. It asks a lot of those kind of questions. Mm-hmm. And upon the the point, if you do do pass away, where do you want buried? And it and it's for me investing five dollars to help it's you so that process it. to be able to start asking those questions mm-hmm. go oh my gosh this is what we need to do mm-hmm. this you know and if you fill it out it's legal in a lot of states and as your a- actual advanced directive mm-hmm. but also the states where it's not a legal document at least they it's can't a base off of it. they can't there is another additional paper that you can add to it mm-hmm. that w- that makes that legal in that state so search that search that out, mm-hmm. um, but there's a lot of places online that you can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a company called Legal Shield, mm-hmm. and Legal Shield they have a minimum uh, a minimum amount, and I'm not going to say what it is because things things change, and I don't want to yeah. I don't know when you're going to be watching this, but <clears throat> Legal Shield is you pay a monthly fee for their legal services, but the basic minimum. Um, when I when I chose to do it this last year, the monthly minimum was fifty dollars, which isn't and, too bad considering. Right, yeah. but for that fifty dollars, is they will give you your um, advanced directives. They will ask you questions, and they will go ahead and put it out there, and so that way, the a lawyer will make your advanced directive, and it's mm-hmm. legal in the state where you're at, and also with things like that. Um, you're not locked into that's the only time that you can do it like forever and ever. Yeah, you, you want to update it because things right. change, whether right. it's a divorce or you have friends that get closer than family or right. you move. There's so many right. different variabilities. Adoption, yeah. you get a windfall of money. How are you going to mm-hmm. do it? So, 
So it's not a one-time only thing. No, and you want to so keep can, updating right, it. You can always update it yeah. and things like that. Um, but there's also, if um, talking about death and dying, if you're part of, um, you have a loved one either at home or at a assisted living facility mm -hmm. or different things like that, um, a lot of the hospices have the social workers that are there can that, that they can help with advanced planning and things mm -hmm. like that. But <clears throat> I'm not I'm not an attorney. No, I'm I not. can't get I can't give legal advice. Mm -hmm. I can just show you we some of the pathways to, the to, yeah. to what you're you know uh, finding things like that. Um, but I do want to touch a little bit on some of the things that happen if you don't have it in writing, mm -hmm. because there were. I, took, I helped uh, eight families this last year walk through sudden death, car accidents, um, was surprised when her husband passed away, and not having anything in writing, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the funerals cost more. They definitely do, because um, you're scrambling and just trying to find something, and not right. actually going through and like selecting ones and comparing them and that kind of thing, and right. figuring what's best for your family. Right, and, it, and it's um, when, when you look at putting things in writing ahead of time, then you, you have a little bit, you not a little bit, you have a lot more flexibility mm -hmm. of uh, the funeral home that you want to go to, the cemetery, yeah. whether it's close by, um, whether it's out of state or different country, mm -hmm. you can kind of start planning that and knowing in advance on what you need to have in place. But what happens is if you don't have, if you haven't thought about that, mm -hmm and the death occurs, again, there's a 100% mortality rate, right? Exactly. So when a death does occur, it's, it, it brings chaos. It brings, what do I do? How do I do it? How do I have the money? There's so much that's in there. So many questions that need to be and, answered, yeah. Right, and instead of being where you want to be interred, you're at a, a position where um, you have to make decisions quickly, and it's, I wanted this, but I'd really have to do this mm -hmm. Whether instead. it's financial right. constraints or whatever. Right, yeah. right. And that, and that gets hard. Mm -hmm. And then with, with children, businesses, mm -hmm. and things like that. So having, having, again, things having in writing ahead of time. Um, and there was one family that I helped where I was going to my friend's house to help help her where we didn't expect her mother to pass away like 12 hours after I got there. Yeah. And sad. so we're, the siblings and I were, stand, were in the kitchen and we look over and the parent had passed mm. and they weren't quite ready for that. No, they weren't ready. And yet. at that particular point, what happens was I had to be referee mm. and being referee and at a point of death, there's all this emotion that, that gets stirred up. What do we do? How do we do that? Mm -hmm. I want this. I want that. I don't care, what, I don't care what the parent yeah. wants. I want this. And it, and it cuts all of that. And God in his graciousness gave me the right kind of words, not being disrespectful, but I'm like, okay, guys, time out. Right now, let's not talk about where you guys were at 5, 10, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Right now, focus let's focus on the, on the parent. Let's focus on this right here. Mm -hmm. We can talk about that after Later. the services. And it's, it's hard because, with, again, being in the hospice field, mm -hmm. there's all kinds of unexpected emotion that does end up coming up, and oh, it yeah. just causes a lot of chaos. And it's really helpful to have either a hospice nurse with you or a death doula to be that liaison between the family and the dying and right. just in between the family members to try to keep some peace. Right, right. So, yeah. so um, and around these particular topics, you know, it's, it's interesting because the emotion, and we'll talk later about the grief process mm -hmm. and things like that, but it's, it's the emotion happens is, oh my gosh, it happened, mm -hmm. or I can't believe it happened. There, there's, just, there's just so much in there. Shocked and and having, having that written out, and, and again, with what we're, what, what we're trying to do as a ministry is coming into the congregation mm -hmm. to talk to them, and it's a good idea, 
when you when you write out your advanced directives, you want to have your medical and durable power of attorneys to have that information. Um, your chaplain, your church, mm -hmm. and somebody that wants to speak, but other people outside of your community or inside your community, excuse me, um, to be able to have a copy of that. So that way, you know, God forbid the house burns down and all your copies go down with exactly. it to have it at a couple of different places mm -hmm. as well. And a digital copy too, like in the cloud right. that can be accessed from anywhere. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not tech savvy. She's a little bit more <laughs> tech savvy than I am with that. But, but it's true. It's having things in the cloud, mm -hmm. um, having different family members having a copy with that. So that way everybody knows what's what, you and know, what to expect and what right, needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, uh, is there any, do you have any questions? Because there, there's going to be so many there's other so, topics so yes. that we're, we'll end up talking about. Nothing comes to mind. No. Nothing comes to mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, in, in the series that we were doing, we're going to start breaking down a little bit more specifics about the different topics that we, that we have, whether it is uh, about the specific death, uh, the funeral itself, mm -hmm. what death looks like, who to contact. So we'll talk about those kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to thank you all for for tuning in and, yeah. and watching the beginning of the series. And I want to thank, um, praise God, for GLC and opening up the opportunity for Sierra and I to be able to come here today and to share all the information. There's just, there's so much that's here and we want to, we want to op again, like I was saying at the beginning, mm -hmm. to open up the conversations to make it okay to talk about death. Exactly. And um, on what we want to do, how we want it to be done. Mm -hmm. So that way, when a death occurs, not if, but when, when a death occurs, yes. we have systems in place to be able to make that transition a little bit easier for people to be able to um, come before all of us. So Precisely. So we thank you all for everything that you're doing. And um, we praise God for the giftings that he's given us mm -hmm. to be able to share with you. And, and I, give, I give God the praise and the glory for we want to be a blessing mm -hmm. to share what we have with other people. You know, because exactly. there's just, there's always so much to learn with peace and everything mm -hmm. with that. On behalf of Sarah and myself, Teresa Bates, and Peaceful Passages, we thank you for joining us, and we look forward to talking with you again next week. Shalom. <laughs>